Hi, my name is Mark Speed. I'm the president of the College Band Directors National Association and director of bands at Clemson University. And I'm James Weaver, the director of performing arts and sports for the National Federation of State High School Associations. And together we are co-chairs of the performing arts aerosol study at the University of Colorado Boulder and the University of Maryland. A short video today will describe the risk of COVID-19 transmission during music rehearsals over the last academic year, fall 2020 through spring of 2021. We were assisted in statistical analysis by Dr. Whitney Huang, professor of math and statistical sciences at Clemson University. Although James and I are well read, we are fish out of water when it comes to advanced statistics. So what really happened in live music rehearsals during the pandemic? We conducted a survey beginning April 28th of 2021 to assess the level of spread event that occurred in school-based music programs. Due to the number of United States schools and colleges that did not allow music activities, some assumptions had to be made. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, there are approximately 30,000 secondary and post-secondary schools, and we estimated that about two-thirds of them had in-person music rehearsals. With the variety of responses to the pandemic, some programs met for the entire school year and others met only a few weeks towards the end of the 2020-21 academic year. A conservative estimate assumes the average music performance program, choir, band, orchestra met for 16 weeks with an average of three 30-minute rehearsals each week. This is most likely a low estimate, but it is important to err on the side of caution. 3,000 surveys were returned and analyzed the week of May 24th, 2021. 1,641 programs indicated they had COVID positive members. Eight programs self-reported a potential spread of COVID-19 in a music rehearsal. Many questions still exist to verify if potential transmission occurred in the music class or outside of class, for instance, in a cafeteria or other unmasked social settings. But for the purpose of this analysis, it is assumed they occurred during the music activity as they are self -reported. With an average of 225 music students per school, 20,000 schools with in-person music rehearsal, averaging three 30-minute rehearsals per week for 16 weeks, we get 4.5 million students that rehearsed for a total of 108 million hours. These are estimates, of course, and purposefully estimated on the low side. The overall expected chance of getting COVID-19 in a 30-minute rehearsal would be 0.000051% or a chance in 1 in 1,969,709 per person per half hour at a 95% confident interval. The chances of contracting COVID-19 using most or all of the study mitigations would be 1 in 2,192,287 and the chances of contracting COVID-19 without using any of the study mitigations increases dramatically and would be one in 273,124. Put another way, the risk of using no mitigations is 4.57 times higher than if some or all mitigations are used. When mitigations are used, they are especially effective in a choir setting. Moving beyond the current COVID-19 pandemic, these mitigations for music activities can be used to reduce transmission of many respiratory pathogens, such as the flu, virus, common colds, measles, tuberculosis, etc. A link to the study website can be found below. Thank you all for doing your part to keep music rehearsals as low risk as possible. And thank you for keeping music alive in whatever way you were able to during the pandemic. That effort does not go unnoticed. We wish you best wishes to everyone out there. If you have any questions, as always, you can reach out to Mark or myself at the emails listed below.